Yes, sir. It's your boy B Hayes we're back with another one, guys. So, in this video, we're gonna be sharing a few mistakes we wish we knew early on, mistakes that you, you know, don't want to make. So, let's go ahead and get into the video, guys. Before we do that, let's give it a thumbs up. Also, consider joining the family. So, the first mistake that a lot of people make early on is following too many people. You'll be displayed that way, following his picks, her picks, you know, doing the most. You all over the place. No type of structure, no type of foundation. So, what you want to do is it's okay to hear people out, but never take this, all these different picks, going from all these different people and trying to play all these different charts. You'll be, you know, leaving yourself in a in the jungle running around chasing your tail. What you want to do is, you know, use them as homework. You can see what picks they have in store, but you want to find your own picks. You want to be able to be able to hunt down your own picks after, you know, watching a particular stock for a certain period of time, knowing exactly how that stock move before you actually execute on it and make a day trade. That's if you day trading it. Even if you're investing in it, you want to read up, do your research on the company, see how the stock moves still, just because you want to get in at the best buying opportunity as possible just because you're investing in the stock and day trading the stock they may be on two different time frames meaning investing you plan to hold it for a long period of time so you may feel as you don't care what price you get in at day trading you holding it for a short period of time so you do want to get in at the lowest price possible because you're going to sell it in a short time frame for this highest price possible but on both ends of the stick you still want to get in at the best possible price just because you're investing in the long term you don't plan on selling it right now you still want to get in near the bottom even though nobody knows exactly what the bottom or the top is you still can judge it by the history of the chart human nature tends to say the same so look back at the chart history look back in the past see where that support is and support is where that stock continuously to come down that every time it come down to that area it continues to bounce off that area it's showing strong signs of support there that's where you want to buy it near that point guys also you want to never chase the stock guys never ever chase the stock whenever you missed out on the opportunity it is what it is. It's going to be millions of opportunities that presents itself that you can strike and you'll have an opportunity to do so at. So never get, you know, overwhelmed and thinking, dang, I miss stocks every time. They always, you know, taking off and I be late to the party, this, that, and the third. It's better to be late and know you was late and not uh, try to, you know, chase behind it and end up getting burnt and losing a lot of money then then stay, it's better to say that and then your ch your chance and your time will eventually come where you be early to the party and you already position yourself and you was prepared and you sitting in waiting for everybody else to come in with they buying pressure so never ever chase a stop your opportunity will come if you do your homework you do your due, your due diligence and you sit patiently and wait like a retired investor retired trader just waiting on a golden opportunity. Also, know that cash is a position. Never think you have to have all your money tied up in assets and securities, stocks or crypto. Think you got to have all your money working at the same time. Yes, that's good, but at the same time, then what you're going to have whenever opportunity, once in a lifetime opportunity, come and presents itself, then what you're going to do? You ain't going to be able to strike. You ain't going to be able to take advantage because you got all your funds tied up. So it's always good to have cash sitting on the side as well. You don't have to have 100% of your portfolio tied up in investments. You can most definitely have cash as a position. That's a position as well, guys. So, you know, don't get you know, caught up between that. So I always know this as well, guys. I jot down a few notes so I can have some type of structure with the video and know exactly where I'm, you know, I'm headed. Usually I talk off top of my head, whatever comes to mind, whatever type of advice, you know, I have to, that come to mind and I have to share with you guys, that's what I would have done. But I was like, you know, let me get better with what I'm doing since I'm be doing this for a while, have some type of structure and a plan for my videos before I actually do them, guys. So you already know, I got to get better with this stuff as I go. So also, guys, pay yourself. Let's touch bases on that. And they're going to be in and out. I got them jotted down. They're going to be quick, precise, and to the point. What I mean by pay yourself is basically... You want to, you know, a lot of people don't understand once they get involved in the market, you making a hundred dollars here, a thousand dollars there, 500 here, 2000 there. Then you losing a hundred, 200, 300, you losing money. You never find the time to actually 
enjoy some of that money, pull some out and pay yourself. You will keep all that money in your portfolio and be looking at it like a video game. No, you want to pay yourself. It's okay to, you know, want to get a new high score, but whenever you make, you need to come up with some type of strategy. You know, everybody's different. So do what's best fit for you in your situation. Meaning, Long story short, if you make $500 on a trade or an investment or $1,000 or $5,000, you need to come up with what type of percentage you want to pull out on each big trade like that to pay yourself right on the spot. Because that way, it's a, a few a different type of different type of psychology that goes into effect when you pay yourself out of the market because for one the more money you see in there after you make a five hundred dollar trade or a thousand dollar trade a two thousand dollar trade now your account balance is more especially if you already want working that much money now when you got that much money sitting in your account you feel the need to go even bigger on the next trade because you have more capital but that's where you mess up at and you give your money right back to the market but if you was to pay yourself like i'm telling you and seeing out of that thousand dollars seeing five hundred dollars six hundred dollars fifty percent or over fifty percent that's how i look at it as go ahead and send that out to yourself and now you don't feel the need or urge to put so much on the line the next time because you already you know you already done paid yourself your account balance look almost what it previously was before you even won the trade so now you not entitled to you know, lose that money as quickly because you done took some out and paid yourself. But it's looking like you done lost it or something. But really, you ain't losing. It's just sitting in your account waiting on you because you paid yourself. So pay yourself because it's crucial. It sounds counterintuitive. And if you don't really understand it, you might understand exactly what I'm saying. But the further you get into this, you're going to definitely understand what I'm saying or how important it is going to be to make sure you transferring some money out and paying yourself, guys. So do that. Another thing is research stocks before panic buying like meaning before you see you see a dip panic buy a dip buy and you want to you know uh you you want to jump into it and you want to most definitely make sure you do your research and a quick research just see exactly why this stock is following because the the wrong news could basically have came out and it could be some damaging news to make that stock fall even lower and you catching a falling knife. So you want to see exactly what's causing that stock to fall like it's doing very quickly before actually jumping in because you could be jumping to a falling knife. A lot of people won't tell you that. They just say dip by, dip by. Nah, make sure you, they don't take long. Just look up, see what's going on in the media with why that stock is following. If you don't see nothing, nine times out of ten, won't be nothing going on. That's just the algorithm, the characteristics of the market is doing what it's doing, doing the pattern. And that's that's exactly what you want to be happening. But just in case something is going on in the market, in the media, that's causing this, this company might have just lost everything, might have just went bankrupt. We don't know. So look that up before actually taking, you know, taking, uh, taking, taking advantage of the trade or the opportunity that presents itself. Dollar cost averaging in, you should, guys should know what that is. For the ones that don't know, that's just when you're buying or selling, you can actually buy in increments. You don't have to buy at one particular price. You can buy in in small amounts. You can sell out in increments in small amounts. Same thing. So we cover that. Pay yourself. Uh, uh, pay yourself. We just cover that. Have cash ready. Start small. Another thing is start small, guys. You want to most definitely start small. A lot of people try to be greedy, get in, and play with a lot because they know they could make a lot and end up losing a lot and don't never get or build their potential self up to be able to take and be successful in the market because they started off too aggressively. Start off small, guys. Don't get, you know, don't let the, let the, the lime life fool you into losing all your money quickly guys start off small understand the process understand you know come up with your own process understand what you're doing have you a trading plan where you're getting in where you're getting out at do all that and then when you do that on a smaller scale and perfect it then you could do it on a much larger scale guys but you'll scale up over time learn the movements before you know the stocks who was just talking about that long story short before you actually doing a day trade if you want a day trade to stop you want to study that stock for a while learn how that stock move exactly and then whenever you get ready to execute you know exactly you know what to look for and whenever that stock not doing what it been doing the whole time while you was watching it now you know where to get out at if it don't go according to plan because you've been watching it. it's been doing the same thing the whole time but as soon as you got in and want to do something different trust that different and get up out 
out of there. But if it continue to do the same thing, you let that play ride. You let it do what it do. You execute. So that's all I really got for this video, guys. Just want to give you guys a quick update on the mistakes I wish I knew before getting into the market, guys. And you already know, if you like this video, if you like these type of videos, just let me know. We'll drop more. It's a whole lot of knowledge, a whole lot of different things surrounding the market that, you know, you could use to help benefit you, to help you become a better investor, trader, help you become a better person in the market, guys. So you already know what to do. I love you guys. We out. And God bless you. We gone.